Super size versus super skinny is fighting back against the UK's terrible eating habits in Dr Christian's feeding clinic. Still want that burger? No, that's horrible. And we're flying all eight super sizes to the USA to come face to face with a potentially shocking future. I'm Kalila Morris. I'm 36 and I weigh 37 and a half stone. Journalist and recovered anorexic Emma Wolf continues to investigate the hidden and upsetting world of eating disorders, including the mother of a young woman who lost her fight against anorexia. I just knew she had died. It's brought it home to me in a way that nothing else has. And comes face to face with the ravages of long-term disordered eating when she meets Valeria Levitin, reportedly the world's thinnest woman. Plus, Dr. Christians in America. Las Vegas might be known as Sin City, but its biggest sin may not be one that you'd expect. It has one of the highest rates of childhood obesity in the country and the lowest consumption of fruit and vegetables in the US. Dr. Christian meets the people fighting Vegas's obesity epidemic. Gosh, that is delicious. And finds out about an extreme weight loss device on trial in America. Super Size versus Super Skinny is back. A quarter of all adults in England are classed as obese, and the medical impact's massive, leading to strokes, heart disease, breast and colon cancer. At the other extreme, 1.6 million people in the UK are affected by an eating disorder. Under-eating can result in osteoporosis, organ failure and loss of fertility. As a result, Dr Christian has opened the doors to his feeding clinic once again, where he's taking on terrible diets at both ends of the scale. He's inviting eight super sizers and eight super skinnies to swap meals and face their dangerous diets head on. I brought together 16 people with some truly terrible eating habits. By pairing them up and getting them to swap diets in my feeding clinic, I'm hoping this is going to be just the tonic they need to turn their lives around. Joanne, come on forward. Same and I have you are being paired with. You're with Guy. You all right? Hiya, nice to meet you. <laughs> well, I'm shocked. You're a lot bigger than I am. Yeah, you're so small. I know. <laughs> what kind of food do you eat? I don't really eat anything through the day. OK. Uh, I don't eat till probably about 11 o'clock, but that's when I start eating, and I don't stop eating till about 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> I thought, wow, she's like five times the size of me. Is that bad? <laughs> I am worried about eating his diet. That I'm going to be running on empty. Though their diets are worlds apart, Joanne and Guy do share something in common. They both lack motivation. They're going to have to use their time in the feeding clinic wisely to work out how they're going to get over these problems that are doing nothing but hold them back. 34-year-old mum of two, Joanne, is a cereal snacker who can always find a reason to eat. I do comfort eat uh, and boredom eat as well. When I'm upset, I'll eat. When I'm happy, I'll eat. I'll just completely graze throughout the day. All this compulsive eating has left Joanne tipping the scales at 19 stone and five pounds. I've tried all sorts of diets, meal replacement, all the slimming clubs. I've lost a couple of stone and then I've got complacent and I've put it all back on again and an extra stone as well. This yo-yo effect has destroyed her confidence and she's worried it's affecting her relationship with husband Dean. I don't let him see my body. You know, lights off, blinds down, under the covers, that kind of thing. He hasn't seen me naked since I gave birth to my son, which was six years ago. Despite her anxieties, her relationship of 16 years with husband Dean is still rock solid. I still love her and fancy her the same, so if she did lose weight, her confidence would just grow and should be all bubbly and 
She'd be more happy with herself. But it's not just how she looks that's making her unhappy. I'm really worried about my health. I'm already at a massive risk of having a heart attack or a stroke, and the bigger I get, the, the more that risk is going to increase. It's very scary, especially when I'm only 35. While Joanne never stops eating, eight stone, five pound super skinny guy has the opposite problem. This 20-year-old full-time student and restaurant manager just doesn't make time to eat. I've got a really, like, busy kind of lifestyle, and I'm always either at work or at uni. Food will always be at the back of that list. Instead, Guy runs his skinny frame on fizzy drinks and caffeine, with half his calories coming from sugary drinks alone. I'm surprised my teeth haven't rotted yet. <laughs> and when he does eat, he's not big on his five a day. I would say I am a fussy eater. I tried cauliflower one. That didn't go down well. This inadequate diet has resulted in a lean frame Guy's uncomfortable with. I wouldn't say I'm a fan of my figure. I feel like the only reason I'm not in a relationship is because I'm too self-conscious about myself. I want to, like, put over a stone on. And I want to be, like, a normal 20-year-old. Before Guy and Joanne enter the feeding clinic for two days' intensive treatment, Dr Christian's sending 19 stone, 5 pounds yo-yo dieter Joanne to America for a super-sized kickstart. This is my last chance now. I feel like I've tried everything. I've tried all the diets and nothing's worked. Uh, and I think the shock will, you know, it will shock me into doing something which I haven't previously been able to do. Awaiting Joanne's arrival in Alton, Illinois, is trainee nurse Kalila. I'm Kalila Morris. I'm 36 and I weigh 37 and a half stone. Kalila's been on a diet and fitness regime for the last two years and has lost a fabulous five and a half stone. I am not your typical fat person. I exercise, I play with my kids, I go to school, you know, I can walk, I can drive, um, I have a social life, I got a man, you know, we do what we do. <laughs> At her heaviest, Kalila weighed 43 stone, but she's now on a mission to take control of her health. I'm tired of the looks that I get. I'm tired of the judgment. And it's not just strangers she feels judged by. I think some men do feel I should be grateful, like they're doing me a favor, you know, but um, <laughs> it is such the other way. Because have you seen this? Do you see me? I'm doing you a favor. Like Beyonce, you know, she's like, I'm going to upgrade you. I upgrade you. It's exactly this confidence that Dr. Christian hopes will motivate Joanne and set her off on her own weight loss journey. I've never met anybody any bigger than myself, really, so I just don't know what to expect. <laughs> Hi, Hi, how are you? I'm good. Come in. Thank you. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> I love your hair. You look so cute. I love that top. You got it going on, girl. <laughs> Thank you. I've just got so many questions to ask you, but I just feel really nervous. You can it's... ask me anything. <laughs> I'm totally an open book. He can ask me anything. Okay. He can ask me anything. How how does your weight affect your life? People try to perceive who I am before they actually meet me. Okay. You know, um, it's a stereotype, I believe, over here in our country that, you know, if you're overweight, that you're lazy, you're sloppy, you don't take care of yourself, you're not smart, and that's not always the case. Because I know that's not the case with me. <laughs> it's like listening to myself talking. Yeah. Absolutely incredible, honestly. There's just so much I feel like I can't do with my kids because of my size. Yeah. You know, just you know, playing football with my little boy and going swimming. I won't wear a swimming costume. No, why not? I just don't feel comfortable. I feel almost naked yeah. wearing it. Mm. Well, you know, one thing that I'm uncomfortable about is um, I, I feel bad because I, I don't really go to the movies because yeah. the seats are kind of small and, and I don't know if I can fit in them. Kalila has lost five and a half stone through diet and exercise, and today she wants to introduce Joanne to her weekly aerobics class. This is absolute hell for me. I know I'm not going to be able to complete the class. I've got 
and not in my stomach because uh, I know by the end of this class I'm just going to be really, really embarrassed. Coming up, Dr Christian drops in mid aerobics for a surprise visit. You're doing my job for me, you know. Help. It's just inspiring her. <laughs> and Guy and Joanne's diet swap gets off to a very bumpy start. This looks disgusting. 19 stone, five pound super sizer Joanne is being dragged to an aerobics class by 37 and a half stone Kalila. Dr. Christian sent Joanne to meet Kalila so that she can see somebody taking real steps to lose weight. But what neither of them know is that he's on his way to check up on how it's going. What I'm hoping is that some of Kalila's enthusiasm is going to rub off on Joanne so that when she gets back to England, she'll go at it all guns blazing. Despite her fears, Joanne's exceeding her own expectations. You don't want to. You looked a bit shocked. <laughs> I was sweaty. What do you think? How was it? It was all right, actually. Yeah? Yeah, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Kayla, how are you? I'm question. Oh, nice to meet you. That was good. Thank you. How long have you been doing this? For about three months. You're doing my job for me, you know. Help. It's just inspiring her. <laughs> yeah. So, how have you found your time here? Has it been useful, do you think? Yeah, it's very useful. Uh, it's been an eye-opening journey, I think, uh, to meet Kalila and see how she lives. She's got 30-plus years of bad habits that she needs to break. You've only got how many? About 10. 10 years. Yeah. Do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, I yeah. do. Yeah, but I do. there's don't... kind of no excuses, really? No. Well, listen, I'm going to see you back in London soon yeah. for the feeding clinic bit. Yeah. For more fun. So I'm going to leave you back with Kalila. OK. Get some more inspiration off that lady, cos she's, she's good. She is. She's amazing. All right. Yes. All right. Best All of right luck, then. my love. Thanks very much. As a reward for finishing the aerobics class, Kalila takes Joanne for a bit of girl time. So do you like to keep yourself looking nice for your mum? I like to keep myself looking nice for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, he likes the way I look. Um, he doesn't have a problem with uh, my weight or anything like that. Uh, can I ask you, do you find sex easy? Or is it difficult because of your size? Um, I don't have any problem. I don't no. have any problem at all. When that itch comes, I get it scratched. <laughs> See, I'm really self-conscious in the bedroom. I buy, like, sexy underwear, lingerie and that, and mm -hmm. uh, I never wear it. Why? Because I buy it with good intentions, thinking, you know, I'm going to look sexy for my husband, and then I get home and I try it on, and I just look in the mirror and I feel disgusted. You better put it on! <laughs> Girl, you better put that stuff on and put it on your man. I mean, I mean, really, you're only going to wear it for about two seconds anyway, so it don't really matter. <laughs> Before they know it, Joanne's time in the States has come to an end. I'm going to miss you, but I want you to keep in touch with me. Yes, definitely. Let me know how it's going. I'm sure you're going to do fabulous, because yeah. I, I think you're ready. And I'll be keeping tabs on you as well. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Give me yeah, love, give me love, give me love. Oh. My stay in America has been absolutely incredible. It's been an emotional roller coaster. I've just gone through so much since I've been here. I've learned so much as well. And I can't wait to get home and put everything that I've learned into practice. I hope that she's learning to, one, be confident in herself, to not underestimate her abilities. And I hope that she's learning that it's time now to take action. Joanne's back in the UK, and it's time to put good intentions to the test. She's checking in for a two-day intensive stay at the feeding clinic and will be joined by super skinny Guy. Before they get started on their diet swap, Dr Christian wants to see them both, starting with eight stone five pounds Guy, who survives on fizzy drinks and micro portions. Looking at your food diary, it kind of looks a bit like the food diary of 
a child. You won't eat your vegetables, will you, and stuff like that. It's very, you like your sugary stuff. One of the things that we do when we analyse your food diary is we kind of look at the five top things that you eat the most of. Right. And do you know what the five top things were? The five top foods? No. The five oh. top things were liquids. <laughs> the top five things consumed in greatest quantity was liquid. It wasn't even solid. So we've got to start changing that. Yeah? Weighing in at 19 stone 5 pounds, frustrated fad dieter Joanne is at the other end of the spectrum. Let's talk calories for a minute. Average woman needs around 2,000 calories a day, okay. give or take. Yeah. Guess what you're on? <laughs> I'd have to think. You're on three times that. 6,000 plus calories a day wow. you're getting through. You're eating for three. Carry on like that, you will just carry on piling on the pounds. That's not good. It's time to start the two-day diet swap, and Joanne's dishing up her belly-busting lunchtime favourites. Oh, no. On the menu is deep-fried chicken and chips, a Wensleydale and carrot chutney sandwich, a big bowl of crisps and a Belgian bun, a glass of orange juice, a large energy drink and a pint of lemonade. That's like three days' worth of food for me all in one. All Guy's handing over is an energy drink. This looks disgusting. It's one of my favourite sandwiches. Was that even cheese? <laughs> yes, it's cheese. Guy spurns the sandwich, but is determined not to be beaten by the mammoth meal, attacking the chicken and chips. Is that all right, or do you lick the plate? It's really scary to see it laid out like that. Just the sheer volume of the food. I feel so sorry for you. Just a few hours in, and the diet swap's already helping Joanne to reflect. And liquid luncher Guy has also made an impressive start. <laughs> I'll give up my best shot, but that's all I'm going to do. No, you've done really, really well. I wasn't expecting you to eat that much. Joanne's body confidence is at an all-time low, and her love life has been left in the dark. He hasn't seen me naked since I gave birth to my son, which was six years ago. Knowing the clinic won't be easy, her husband's written her a letter of support. Wife, I hope that you get all you want out of this experience. I know the way you feel about your weight and size and hope that after your experience you feel better about yourself and you feel positive about moving forward. You know this is a great opportunity for you. Rather than those fad diets, I've lost count of how many you've been on. As always, darling, I will always be here to support you. I love you more, hubby. It's that hard? I know he supports me. He's always supported me. <laughs> Through every single so diet. And yeah. I've been on every diet. It's just, he just he loves you for who you are. Yeah. Bless you. Dinner time, and after suffering a whole day without food, Joanne has her first measly meal. Four chicken nuggets, nine fries, and another energy drink. That's a children's meal. Whilst vegetable-phobic guys facing half a 12-inch vegetarian pizza... That pizza looks like I hate pizza. Four spicy chicken wings with potato wedges covered in garlic dip, two garlic cheese balls, two warm cookies with two scoops of vanilla ice cream, all washed down with a whole bottle of white wine. A full bottle of yeah. wine. Yeah, that's pretty average for Saturday night, full bottle of wine. Just Saturday night? No, 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 I don't, I don't drink a bottle of wine every night. <laughs> <laughs> I do drink, but on the weekends I drink more. The feeding clinic is an alcohol-free zone, so it's non-alcoholic here for Guy. I hate sweet corn. I've never tried it, but I hate it. How do you know if you've never tried them? It's just the look of it that pits me off. Mushrooms, they're slimy and minging. <laughs> oh. To be honest with you, I'm worried about you. You're not getting any goodness 
from the food you're eating. With Joanne's tough words ringing in his ears, Guy takes on the pizza. That mushroom can come straight off, cos I know I don't like that. I'll allow the mushroom. <laughs> I can't. Mm. Your face is a picture. Uh, I've disgusted him. It's only a vegetarian pizza. It's an, it's an everyday food that people eat all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> But in the end, Guy manages a whole slice of pizza, vegetables and all. I'm done. And demolishes dessert right down to licking the plate clean. <laughs> <laughs> you go for it. I'm done. I, I, I can't even look at food no more. Just when Guy thought it was all over, Joanne's got the munchies. Bye. Joanne's snack is a massive bowl of popcorn, leftover pizza and wedges, five chicken dippers and a pint of orange juice. I just I don't understand how you can go from that tea from the lunch and into this. I'm just hungry. I'm always hungry. <sighs> The United States of America, where everything is bigger and bolder. So it's hardly surprising they have an obesity crisis when, as a population, they eat 815 billion calories a day. That's 200 billion more than they actually need. Nowhere is this more apparent than in Las Vegas, where the streets are lined with 24-hour diners and all-you-can-eat buffets. But behind the city's bright lights, there's a fast-growing industry in weight loss surgery. Bariatric surgeons here in Las Vegas have reported a sharp rise in the demand for surgeries. And the lust for technology means that many hospitals here in Las Vegas are investing in the latest surgical device, robots, at the cost of $1.2 million each. So this is the Da Vinci robot in all yes. its glory. Yes. And how has this changed things for you? First and foremost, it's made it safer, much safer. Yeah. It's very precise, yeah. it's very stable, and most importantly, it does not fatigue. The patients are having much better outcomes, less pain, faster return to work, faster return to activity. And Las Vegas, I understand, is a real hub for the use of this sort of technology. Yeah, we have 13 hospitals here. Almost every single one of them has at least one machine. Many of them have two. So this is probably the most rapidly expanding market for usage of robotics in the United States. The robot is operated remotely by the surgeon using cameras inside the patient's body. This is a stereoscopic vision. So I see in 3D inside the patient. And then I can move the instruments around. With three fully controllable arms and interchangeable precision instruments, the robot enables the surgeons to perform a more precise form of keyhole surgery. Would you like to give it a shot? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, and it moves absolutely in real time. So it's not an exaggerated movement. It can actually be adjusted. So if you're operating on very small things, you can make it so that large movements over here translate into smaller movements over at the patient. That's amazing. Gallbladder patient Barbara is about to undergo surgery using the steady hand of the Da Vinci. When I first heard that I was going to be operated on by a robot, it was like, oh, wow, that's a little different. Let's go for it. Dr. Citro is currently in theatre right now using the Da Vinci robot to remove a gallbladder from a lady. The reason? She has gallstones, something that we commonly see associated with obesity. The Da Vinci robot arms access the body through a rubber bung porthole inserted into the belly button. The entire operation now takes place inside the body, with Dr. Citro delicately controlling his surgical tools remotely in the comfort of his chair. Standing at a bedside, suffering instruments is very tiresome on the back. But sitting here in a nice, comfortable chair is very relaxing. And I have a lot less back pain when I operate. And for larger patients, the robot can also be fitted with longer arms. 
With full 360 degree rotation, the pincers secure the gallbladder and a dissecting tool is then selected to cut it away. After 45 minutes, the gallbladder is safely and efficiently removed. The Da Vinci robot may enable surgeons to perform faster and more precise bariatric procedures, but some people are opting for even more extreme ways to deal with their excess weight. Michael Sederhag is 55 years old from Malmo, Sweden. For over 30 years, he has battled with obesity. In 2012, Michael was 22 stone and feeling as if he would never lose weight. He decided to try an extreme weight loss device on trial in America. Michael has flown into Las Vegas to meet Christian and to show him the device in action. So how much weight then have you lost? Almost half of my weight. Half your body weight. Yeah. Over what sort of period of time? 12 months. Can you tell me about it? It involves a, um, a small medical device. Um, it's a tube from my stomach and out on my belly to emptying from my stomach what I just ate. So it goes into your stomach? Yes. Through the outside? Yeah. Right. It takes around 20 minutes for Michael's lunch to reach his stomach. Then, if he chooses, before it's absorbed, a third of it can be drained off via a silicon rubber tube and out of a skin port. This port has been installed into the front of Michael's belly. This way, he only digests two-thirds of anything that passes through his system. So you are literally having your cake and eating it. You want to lose weight, but you want to continue to eat normally. Some people say that I have a medical bulimic device mounted into my body, that I could shove things in and just flush it out. Now, that's not going to happen because it doesn't work. You need to chew your food Ah, so it is not properly masticated, more. it won't pass through the exactly. tube. It will the stick. opening is just that big. OK, just so that is a really key part of it. You have to chew exactly. the food. This is the uh, skin port, and you can see the, the tube behind it. So I connect it and open it. As soon as I open it, it starts to burn, all by itself. This was the food we had downstairs just 45 minutes ago, so I know exactly what's coming out. Having reached his goal weight, Michael is already weaning himself off the device. He stopped using the port for breakfasts and next will stop draining lunches and finally dinners before having the port removed altogether. Watching someone essentially douching the contents of their stomach out into the lavatory via a plastic tube is, on the surface, so unnatural and quite horrific to watch. But when you think about it, actually, this is the first treatment that really deals holistically with the problem of overeating. It deals with the basics like portion size, pacing yourself, chewing, things that we all ought to know, but so many, many people don't get right. Until we radically rethink our indulgent lifestyles, the need for extreme solutions like this will continue to grow. And there's no replacement for healthy living. Exercise and balanced eating will always be the safest and simplest route to weight loss. Supersizer Joanne usually eats 6,000 calories a day, but yesterday in the feeding clinic, she barely had 500. And it's not looking any brighter this morning, as she's nothing but orange juice for breakfast. In contrast, eight stone five pound meal dodger Guy has double portions with two sausage rolls, two mini cheeses, two toasted tarts smothered in icing, as well as a pint of orange juice. I'm quite hungry this morning for oh, some okay. reason. Orange juice for me again. Yeah, now I see it. It's basically living off a liquid diet. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I would never think to wake up in the morning and have a selection like this. There's no thought that's gone into it at all. I just grab whatever's there. It's just laziness. That's all it is, laziness. So we do have one thing in common. Yeah, we're both lazy. <laughs> She's lazy, but we'll order in. I'm lazy, but don't bother doing anything about it. See, I'm full now after just the savoury bit. Yeah. No man having a dessert for breakfast. Yeah, I am. Never thought about it like that. He's absolutely right. It is a humongous amount of food, and if you break it down, it is a starter, main course, and a dessert. 
scary. After just 24 hours in the clinic, Joanne's starting to realise that slimming down her portion sizes would be much more effective than fad dieting. Guy, too, is making progress, completely cleaning his plate. Yay, he did it! If Joanne was left hungry from breakfast, lunch will be an even bigger disappointment, as she has absolutely nothing. I can't believe there's nothing in front of you. Across the table, Guy's getting a cheeseburger, sweet potato fries, two glazed donuts, one banana and peanut butter milkshake, and one energy drink, adding up to a staggering 2,000 calories. That's the entire recommended daily allowance for an adult woman. I can't believe you did this to me. How can you not have anything at lunch, not even liquids? Yeah, I just feel so bad for you. Wow, do I actually eat this little? But I've just been doing it for that long, I don't really... It doesn't bother us. Three, <laughs> two... Counting down a burger. One. It's all right. Hey! This meal is anything but healthy, yet having food in front of him is teaching Guy to recognise hunger and eat more than ever before. That's it, I can't. I'm done. Done. <laughs> Riding high on his success at lunch, it's Guy's final test in the feeding clinic, and Joanne's offering up her biggest challenge yet. <laughs> Are you for real? It's steak with a rich, creamy sauce, loads of chips, a second course of fried chicken with more chips, three glasses of red wine, that's 372 calories worth, an orange juice and a lemon sorbet. That is one hell of a portion. I haven't eaten for 24 hours and it looks very appetising right now. <laughs> and at last, for Joanne, there's more than an empty placemat. Got food, yay! <laughs> Joanne's got chicken, chips and rice. Did you not have a drink with your main meal? I must have forgot. <laughs> so what, what are you going to take away from your time here, then? Think about food more, find time to actually eat. <laughs> what about you? Seeing my food laid out like that, it's been a proper wake-up call for me. <laughs> it's disgusting. You two consume a lot. Yeah. But since I've, like, started supping, like, my diet with you, it's got easier. Yeah. And I feel like I can eat better now. But just not in this... Yeah. A normal portion size. A normal portion. With their final dinner done, Dr Christian wants to hand over their eating plans for a healthier future. Joanne, this one is yours. You know what you have to do. You know the good foods and the bad foods. You now just have to start applying it, all right? Guy, all I would say to you is just each and every day try and introduce something new. Even if you don't carry on eating it, I want you to at least have tried it. And best of luck to the both of you. Thank you. By Joanne reducing her portion sizes and swapping her deep-fried food for healthier options and replacing sugary desserts with yoghurt or fruit, she'll cut her calorie intake by two-thirds to 2,000 a day. Guy's diet plan doubles his daily calorie intake to 2,600, eating six times a day. Setting an alarm to remind him to eat, he'll be saying bye-bye to pick-me-up liquid lunches and hello to slow-release energy foods. It's been a revealing experience. 6,000 calories a day, never again, I'll say that. So, new beginnings. I didn't actually realise, like, how much of a veggie virgin I actually was. And I think it's just been, like, a roller coaster ride. But I'm glad, I'm just glad that I've got to try different stuff. Dr Christian will be checking up on their progress in just under two months' time. See ya. Yeah, bye. Emma Wolfe is an author, journalist and a recovered anorexic. There was no single turning point for me, but it was a growing realisation that I didn't want to be pitied, I didn't want to be a cause of concern, I couldn't do this to my family any longer. 
Through her recovery, Emma has written about her experience of life with anorexia, and in this series, she's investigating the shocking and upsetting world of eating disorders. Anorexia has the highest mortality rate of any psychiatric disorder. Its impact has devastating consequences. Emma's on her way to visit Tracy Taylor, whose daughter Jay recently died of heart failure caused by anorexia. Jay was an amazing young lady. She would light up a room. She had these big, beautiful eyes, a contagious smile, and she was just a lovely person to be around. Jay was 24 years old and weighed just over five stone when she died. And whilst it's only three months since she passed away, her mother and sisters want to speak out. How did it all start with Jay's problems? About when she was 12, 13, um, she got into fitness. She did a lot of um, activities at school. And I knew she had lost a little bit of weight, but um, I just thought with her being, you know, so sporty and active, and when she was 13, I had to take her for some new clothes. And the age I had to get, I was nine to 10. And I was, I was really shocked. But I still didn't realize she had an eating disorder. Gripped by her illness, Jay battled anorexia for 12 years. Her mother, Tracy, struggled to cope with her daughter's illness. I begged Jay, I cried with her to eat something. And once I even threw some food at her, thinking, just eat it. It's, it's simple, just eat it. And I didn't realise then how much I had taken over Jay's mind. There was a lot of different treatments for Jay. It was, it was heartbreaking. Jay was sent all over the country, just miles away from home. As a parent, it's frustrating, it's hard. On the day Jay died, she looked terribly thin. She just went, you mum, I'm tired. I said, well, why don't you have a lie down? And she just like went to lie back, and like I caught her and I went, Jay. There was just nothing there, and I was shaking at Jay, Jay, and I just knew she had died. I was there when she took her first breath, and I was there when she took her last, and I'm just so pleased I was with her when I did. Jay was extremely close to her mum and sisters. The impact of her death has been immeasurable. What's the hardest thing about having a sister with an eating disorder? Watching her get better, then going downhill, then she'd go into hospital, come out looking all right. For a long time you mm -hmm. think she'll turn a corner, mm -hmm. and some people don't, do no. they? No, and it's, that's the hardest part. Along with cherished memories, Tracy's kept a box of keepsakes. Just seeing little stuff, I mean, we've got some lovely photos of her here. Just a little fridge magnet, what I bought her. When you were going through her stuff, did you find anything that you, you didn't know about? Um, a lot of diaries, a lot of diaries. They're, they're, they're really distressing to read some of them. I never knew Jay was actually feeling this way, because she never told me. I'm confused and alone with this question, why? So she was in a lot of... Turmoil. Mm. What was it like when you found this? I couldn't believe she had written in so many books because there's quite a few of these. How's it taken its toll as a mother? At times, <clears throat> I've, I've just sometimes banged my head against doors, walls, because it's frustrating to watch her, well, literally waste away. It's, it just destroys you. One of Jay's closest friends, Laura, is currently battling anorexia and, with support from Dad Brian, is working towards recovery. But it's not been easy. Eating disorders has torn the family apart uh, because a big rift between Laura and myself. A big part of me has been quite maybe ashamed. It would kind of cause me not to talk to my family or see my family for long periods of time because I didn't want them to really know what was going on. So when you first found out that Laura had an eating disorder, what was your first port of call? Where did you go for information? As most people's port of call is, uh, the internet. When you find out about an eating disorder, you can offer support. But if it's hidden from you, 
there is nothing you can do. Did you use any particular support groups to get advice? When I first got involved with the South London and Maudsley Hospital, they were very, very informative uh, about the types of treatments um, that were available. And it was a bit of a relief to know that I wasn't on my own on this. What impact did Jay's death have on you? It was really devastating. I guess I cherish my family more now, knowing that, you know, Tracy doesn't have her daughter anymore. It's kind of taught me that how precious life is. Hearing from families who have been so devastated by anorexia has led Emma to reflect on her own battle with the illness. It's brought it home to me in a way that nothing else has. Really, what I put my parents through and what I put my brothers and sisters through. And it's funny, but what I really need to do right now is to call my mum. So sorry. So sorry for everything that I put them through as well. So I'm going to give my mum a quick call. Hello, mummy. I just wanted to say thank you to you and dad. Why? For everything, for being there for me and for looking after me. Oh, look, just stop it, love. You're, you're fine. You're doing extremely well. But thank you for sticking by me. Oh, no, I mean, you can't get rid of us that easily. <laughs> I love you, and I'll call you later on. OK. OK, lovely. bye. Bye. If you're a loved one in need of support, the following websites offer help and advice to sufferers as well as friends and family. It's been nearly seven weeks since Yo-Yo Dieter Joanne and Meal Dodger Guy left the feeding clinic. But have they kept their resolve and stuck to Dr Christian's diet plans? I'm very nervous about today. I know I've lost weight. I can see that I've lost weight because I've gone down a dress size and I feel better in myself. I feel healthier. It's definitely boosted my confidence. I feel like completely different since like I entered the feeding clinic. I feel like I've got so much more energy than like I ever did. So, guy, it wasn't that long ago when I last saw you, really, was it? No, it wasn't. Six weeks or so? Yes. I did find it hard to start off with. Like, I did find it difficult to put myself in a different routine. Lots of changes to make. Yeah. OK, that's all right, though. What, what have you achieved, do you think? The fact that I've been eating more. Just like in general, like I've not been skipping. That's good, that'll do. <laughs> I've not been skipping any of my meals. Like I will always have my breakfast, I'll always have my lunch, I'll always have my tea, and then I'll always find time to snack as well. So it's not like what I used to be like with just m missing out meals altogether. Good. So food is now a priority for you, because yeah. it definitely wasn't before. No. Joanne, it's very good to see you again. You're looking very well. Thank you. How have things been? I stopped snacking, which I think is the biggest change that I've made. There's no more sort of crisps and chocolate bars and things in my desk at work. But I'm eating a lot more sort of fresh vegetables, Excellent. fresh meat, good. fish, uh, and everything is cooked from scratch now. Sounds like you're sticking to this. Yeah. I Why am. is this one working when previous attempts have failed, do you think? What's the difference? I think because it's slow and steady, so I'm not getting sort of disheartened. Mm. I'm losing weight every week, which is good. Even if it's only half a pound or a quarter of a pound, it's still, you know, still motivating. Like so how about from a psychological point of view? Do you feel a little more confident? I know there were issues between you and your husband, weren't there, yes. about how you <laughs> felt about yourself. Is that starting to change? Yeah, I'm definitely more confident, yeah, and I think it shows and he appreciates the fact that I'm more confident as well. Good. I'm pleased to hear that. It's time to reunite Guy and Joanne. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you definitely put weight on in your face. You, you can see it in your face, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it looks like you've lost a, actually a lot of weight. I really? Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were determined and I knew you would have done that. Yeah. Do you feel better? Yes, yeah, definitely. Loads more confidence, loads more confidence. Well, well, well. Look who's here. Hello. Good to see each other again. Yes, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. First thing I want to say is that I am very pleased with both of you because I think you were both in kind of a... A bit of a rut. So, Guy, I want to start off with you. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, you look so much better. You're still not convinced that you've put on weight change? No. no? Not at all? A pound or two? I'm thinking minimal. 
You've done quite a lot better than that. You've put on half a stone. Wow. Yes. Half a stone. Yay. That's fantastic. <laughs> yes. half a stone. Are you pleased with that? Amazing. Yeah. I think that's a really good achievement. It's difficult yeah. to put on weight. It takes time. And you've done it in a very short time. So I'm really pleased. Oh, I feel good now. So, Joanne, your turn. Yes. Have you lost any weight? I think you've lost a bit <laughs> of weight. What would you like to have achieved? Uh, a stone? Yeah, about that, I think. Perfect. Uh, Good. Yeah. Well, you have. And a little bit more. Oh, OK. One stone, two pounds. Brilliant. Not bad, eh? No. And three inches have now disappeared off your middle. Yay! So, time to buy some new trousers, <laughs> yes. I think, don't you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, I keep wanting to reiterate, it's only been a relatively short time, and the results are showing, and I'm happy with both of you. No more fad diets for me. This is it now. I found something that works, that's sustainable. But yeah, it's just fantastic. I can't wait to get home and tell everybody. It feels amazing, like, gaining half a stone. It does show us, like, I am doing something right and I'm making sure I'm not going to be lazy and I'm not going to fall back into my, like, old routines. And I'm going to just make sure that my diet is consistent and it's going to continue throughout, like, the rest of my life. Next time, two terrible diets in the feeding clinic. I'm not being funny, but, like, no wonder you're so big. It's gastric surgery and gambling for the Las Vegas medical tourists. Big day, you ready? Anytime yeah. you are, let's go. And we meet the biggest American Dr. Christians ever discovered. I'm Nikki James, and I weigh over 51 stones. Who is determined to get even bigger. We'll tack into the next episode at 8 o'clock next Thursday. And if you want to know more about what you're eating, our globetrotting Food Unwrapped is available now on 4OD, including the recent diet and detox special. Calling on Cupid next tonight, looking for love that knows no limits. The Undateables on the way.